Good morning, everyone. This is Pastor Brandon with our uh, Sunday morning worship together. I uh, decided to adjust my attire just a little bit to go with the, the humor theme. Um, I don't actually know how to, to match clothing properly. Uh, I always have Laura help me, but she said, don't worry about it. It's Holy Humor Sunday. So here we go. So um, I thought what we would do is something a little bit different this morning. Um, I want to do a, a responsive kind of prayer. So I'm going to say a line and then um, we'll recite together. Give us patience, O Lord, help us believe. Give us patience, O Lord, help us believe. So uh, I'll say the line and then we'll go from there, okay? In these days when we doubt that our lives will ever be normal again, give us patience, O Lord, and help us believe. When our jobs are disappearing, our school, schools are closed, our hospitals are overwhelmed, sometimes we doubt that better days are coming. Give us patience, O Lord, help us believe. When these internet gather, gatherings feel distant and inadequate, when we miss the warm embrace of our friends and the healing breath of our church. Give us patience, O Lord. Help us believe. When we doubt that our phone calls and offerings are truly helping those in need, when we long to somehow do more. Give us patience, O Lord. Help us believe. When we despair in loneliness and question the need for isolation, while failing to be thankful for our own good health. Give us patience, O Lord, help us believe. In these days of locked doors and fear of others, we ache for the loving assurance of Jesus in our midst. Give us patience, O Lord, help us believe. Amen. I know in this, this time period, we're, we're really struggling, aren't we? to be isolated, to be uh, set aside. It, it's a struggle. I thought maybe that would kind of help and, and help us recognize that. So again, a, a few items for you. Uh, again, we will not meet at least all the way through April. Uh, I'm sure many of you have seen the governor has extended our stay-at-home order until May 1st. So we're definitely not meeting, besides the bishop has asked uh, the... Uh, United Methodist Church is not to meet all of April. I don't know what that's going to, to mean if we're going to get to meet again in May or not, but let's just uh, trust that the governor and our bishop have the best interest in mind for us all to keep everyone safe. So every Monday through Friday at 6 a.m., you can join me for Coffee Time Devotionals. Everybody is, of course, welcome. Wednesdays at 7 p.m. We are doing our Wednesday Night Live Bible study time. This week we are doing the Loaves and Fishes story. And this last week I released our latest episode of The Fandom Pastor. It's linked on the Facebook page here as well. So check that out if you are interested. And don't forget that all of our Easter services, if you or Holy Week, excuse me, Holy Week, well, Easter services are available. You can check all of those out. They are on our Facebook page as well as on my YouTube channel. Uh, so that's our, our Palm Sunday, our walk through Holy Week, our sunrise service, our Easter service, and don't forget the Bishop's Easter message, which was wonderful. Uh, if you have any prayer requests, I ask that you post them uh, below or you can call me you can text me uh, you can just share all of those with me I would like to to be able to share those during this time if you are comfortable with doing so so if you have any prayer requests that you want me to share please please let me know um, I would I would love to be able to to pray for all of you and and to get others involved in that 
So I just, I just need to know. Um, if you want to share a prayer request with me, but you don't want it shared out on, during our service, again, just let me know that as well. I just want to make sure everybody is comfortable um, in, in sharing with what they want to share. And do not forget your offering. It's really important that we continue to financially support our churches as we go through all this. Uh, again, we're, we're all kind of isolated. We're not meeting together. But the church does still have some bills to pay. So if I can get everybody's help with that, that would be wonderful. I think that's all I have at this point. So... Today is Holy Humor Sunday. It's always the, the Sunday after Easter, and humor really surrounds us, especially at a time like this. We need humor. We need to have some relief, some laughter as we deal with all of these different things. Now, maybe it's uh, some great jokes, um, you know, and, and some may question, well, gosh, is that really appropriate? I think so. I, I Heard it, a comedian. I can't remember who who it who had said it, but um, you know that God has a sense of humor. Just look at the platypus. Um, but but the idea is we find humor or should find humor everywhere. Now maybe you find it in a person. Now Lori was sharing with me that uh, Kirk makes her laugh. Um, that's where she finds humor. I can't. Can't help but remember the time I found Cheetos and the offering plate from her. Uh, maybe it's, again, a favorite joke. Maybe it's like uh, Miss Alice is always sending me comic strips that she thinks I'll like. Um, there's just always something funny in life. And so I asked some to share with me some of their favorite jokes, some good jokes, um, so here's a few. So Lori and Greg actually both sent this one to me. Uh, how do you make holy water? You get regular water and boil the hell out of it. Um, here's another one. Uh, who is the smartest man in the Bible? Abraham, because he knew a lot. Uh, here is another one. Um, Jane sent me this one. Uh, my son wanted to borrow the car, and I said, not until you get a haircut. My son said, yeah, but Jesus had long hair. I said, yes, but he walked everywhere he wanted to go. And of course, we don't have to just do uh, quote unquote Christian humor. Uh, there's all sorts of good, clean, appropriate humor out there too. Uh, here's another one that was shared with me. Just going to show that the world is, is a funny place. Um, a mother and daughters are driving to Florida, and they pass a town, and the mother said, Well, that's a cute name. kiss -a me One of the daughters said, No, Mom, it's an Indian name. It's pronounced kiss -me. So they stopped for lunch and asked the, the young lady at the counter, Where are we at? How do you pronounce it? And the young lady looked at him and said, Burger king um you know i i think it's it's good for us to laugh it's good to have a sense of humor it's a relief it's good to laugh i'm gonna um, start with our prayer and we'll get into the sermon come holy spirit Fill the hearts of your faithful and kindle in them the fire of your love. Send forth your spirit and they shall be created and you shall renew the face of the earth. O God, who by the light of the Holy Spirit did instruct the hearts of the faithful, grant that by the same Holy Spirit we may be truly wise and ever enjoy his consolations. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. So the scripture I'm going to read is, I'm sure, a very familiar one to everyone. Ecclesiastes, chapter 3, verses 1 through 4. There is a time for everything, and a season for every activity under the heavens, a time to be born and a time to die, a time to plant and a time to uproot, a time to kill 
and a time to heal, a time to tear down and a time to build, a time to weep and a time to laugh, a time to mourn and a time to dance. I'm not sure if I'll be able to keep this on the whole time, but we'll see. So it's interesting that we are joining with a lot of other, um, a lot of other churches, both American and around the world, who are resurrecting this idea of Holy Humor Sunday. It's a celebration of Jesus' resurrection on the Sunday after Easter. And this actually was begun in the Greeks in the early centuries of Christianity. For centuries in Eastern Orthodox, uh, Catholic, and Protestant countries, the week following Easter Sunday uh, was either called Holy Humor Sunday or Bright Sunday. And we observe days of joy and laughter. And this was always celebrated with parties, celebrations. Uh, the, the pastor and the congregation would play pranks on each other. There was apparently water throwing. Uh, it was just a time of fun. They would sing. They would dance. They would celebrate. Now, Obviously, we're not going to take it quite that far today because, well, we can't get together, can we? But we'll see. Now, the custom was rooted in some of the early theologians, Augustine, Gregory of Nice, and uh, John Kirstom. And it was a symbol of God playing a prank on Satan. It was the first gotcha that was really significant. Uh, the, the proper term, and I, again, I'm not great at languages, so I'll probably butcher this. Rhesus Pachalis, the Easter laugh. That's what they called this day. And along the way, actually, things went so far, I don't know if you had ever heard of this, but the Pope actually instructed them to calm down, to kind of tone it down a little bit. In fact, that's where we get the, the phrase, party pilper. All right. You know, at this point, I would usually pause and let everybody laugh because that was hysterical. But, you know, nobody's here to laugh at me other than my family, and they don't think it's that funny either. The idea of a Sunday given into humor can be kind of challenging for some people, though, isn't it? It can be sometimes challenging because for those of us who grew up in the church, we didn't always see church as a place to always laugh. Because it seems like once you put on a suit and tie, you sometimes forget how to laugh. When you go and dress up a little more, sometimes you forget how to laugh. We're brought up in a, a church, and an occasional chuckle is okay, but an outright laughter maybe isn't appropriate. And, and look at some of our spiritual ancestors. You know, if you look at some churches, uh, they have pictures of past, past pastors. They have pictures of great theologians. I mean, we can look at books and stuff, for things just like that now. And we wouldn't exactly look at those people and say, wow, those are some party animals. We just don't do that, do we? We don't see those people as leading in laughter. So for some, it may be kind of a struggle. It may be uncharted territory to laugh on a Sunday especially in a worship service. But quite honestly, I don't see this as being in any worse a time. In fact, I think this is a significant time, a great time for us to laugh, 
the season of Easter. It's a season of joy, and laughter brings joy, and joy brings laughter. So there was this meeting at this little country church, and one of the, the young elders, the newest young elders, uh, proposed that the church purchase a chandelier. Now, there was uh, quite a bit of discussion. Uh, some thoughts, some debates going on. And finally, one of the older elders, the eldest of the elders, stood up. A well-respected man. Everyone went silent as he stood up because they wanted to hear what he had to say. He said, now I appreciate the motion that is here before us today. I have three concerns. First, ain't none of us going to be able to spell it, so we can't order it out of the Sears and Roebuck catalog. Second, once we get it here, ain't nobody knows how to play it. And number three, the real need we have in this church is to put some more light in here. Now, when you look at the concordance, now the concordance is uh, in the back of some Bibles or even separate books. And what this is, is a, a section, or again, another book, that tells you where things are listed, um, maybe a particular phrase or a word that you're looking for. You can find it in the Bible. So when you look in, in the concordance, what's interesting is if you look at how many times laugh or laughter is found in the Bible. And interestingly enough, when you look for that, it's depressing. Because there isn't actually that many references to it in the Bible. It really isn't. There are not many times you can find laugh or laughter in the Bible. We, we see joy. We see happiness. We see blessings. But there's not too many instances of anyone being, being gripped taken over by laughter. Still, the writer we only know as Koheleth wrote in the book of Ecclesiastes. For everything there is a season and a time for every matter under heaven, a time to weep and a time to laugh. Now, laughter has its place. It has its time. Laughter is a creation of God. I don't think anybody can argue that. Everything God created is proclaimed good, and laughter is good. According to doctors, laughter is physically good for you. Did you know that? We change physiologically when we laugh. We change. It's healthy to laugh. We stretch muscles throughout our face and our body. Our pulse and our blood pressures go up. We breathe faster, sending more oxygen to our tissues. People who, who believe in the benefits of laughter say it can be like, well, like a workout. It can be an exercise and actually offers some of the same advantages as a workout. One doctor said, the effects of laughter and exercise are very similar. Combining laughter and movement, like waving your arms, is a great way to boost your heart rate. And there's actually a, a researcher into laughter by the name of William Fry. And it, he said, it took him 10 minutes on a rowing machine for his heart rate to reach the level it would take after one minute of hearty laughter. One minute of hearty laughter equals 10 minutes on a rowing machine. Is there any question that laughter is good? So who knows? If you think my jokes are funny, maybe this uh, sermon's pretty darn good for you. One day, Groucho Marx, I just got a weird look from my wife, so just so you know, I, I'm seeing her off to the side. So one day, Groucho Marx was getting off of an elevator, and he happened to meet this clergyman, this, this pastor. And the, the pastor 
um, said, uh, Mr. Marks, thank you so much for all the joy you put into the world. And Groucho Marx said, well, Pastor, thank you so much for all the joy you've taken out of it. And sometimes we wonder, don't we? Are we taking joy, are we taking laughter out of the world? Are we making people think that it isn't quite as good as we make it out to be? If you remember in Genesis, the story of Sarah and Abraham. So um, there are these three strangers that show up and want to meet and talk to Abraham. Now Abraham, uh, being the very hospitable host, uh, provides all sorts of drink and eating. And, and so they sit down and they're talking and they're having a great conversation. And the three men share with Abraham that he... And Sarah are going to be parents. Now, Sarah and Abraham are a little on the old side. Uh, Abraham's about 100. Sarah's about 90. So already we're, we're in a, a pretty funny situation. And in fact, the situation is so funny that Sarah, who's kind of hiding behind the, the tent flaps, she's kind of peeking in, listening to him talk. She literally laughs out loud. She can't believe this. She's like, no, 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 no. That ain't happening. She literally laughs. In fact, the Hebrew word for laughter or giggle is Yitzhak or Isaac. And when their baby is born, I know, spoiler alert, when their baby is born, they name the baby Isaac. And of course, uh, the, the continuation of the story goes, and Sarah says, God has brought laughter for me. Everyone who hears will laugh with me. Can you imagine being so filled with laughter, so filled with joy? That you simply had to share it with everyone you know. That's Sarah's story. And the source of her laughter and the source of her joy is God. A God who lives and breathes. A God that exists. There are three pastoral candidates who were to appear before this, this council to be recommended for ordination. Now they... They meet with each of the candidates one by one. So the first candidate comes in and they ask the young man, they say, well, explain to us what Easter means. So the candidate kind of paused and said, uh, it was night and the sky was filled with angels who were talking to these shepherds. And the angel said, and the, the council goes, whoa, 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 whoa. Go back to seminary and learn some more. So the second candidate comes in. And they ask him the same question. What is the meaning of Easter? And the candidate, kind of nervous, says, well, there's this day where we, we buy candy and flowers for the people we love the most. And the council goes, no, 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 no. Go back to seminary and learn some more. So they're getting a little desperate. They're getting a little concerned, right? So they, they bring in the third candidate. And they say, they ask the question, what is the meaning of Easter? Well, the third candidate very confidently says, well, very early in the morning. Uh-oh. They get kind of excited now. They kind of lean forward. They go out to the garden. Ooh, they're getting excited now. He stands in the doorway. Oh my gosh. The committee's really excited. And if he sees the shadow, there's six more weeks of winter. Humor is everywhere. Humor is good for us. 
We can laugh. We need to let other people see us laugh. We need to let people know that there is joy, there's laughter, there's enjoyment in the risen king. If there's a reason for laughter, it's found in the resurrection of Jesus Christ. God completely turning the tables. Again, it's the, the great gotcha to Satan. The great I win to Satan saying, ha ha, we got gotcha. you. We need to understand that people need a reason to laugh, a reason to have joy. All of us do, especially when we're looking at things like the situation we're in now. God completely turned the tables. He was actually shouting back to us life when we shouted death. <clears throat> God totally and, and perfectly having the last word. The last word. Through the resurrection of Jesus Christ. We are assured of our forgiveness by God and by our adoption as children of God. What could be more appropriate and honest than laughter? Can you imagine? It talks about the, the women leaving, leaving the garden after seeing that Jesus has has disappeared, his body has disappeared. The angel had have, have told them to go and share with others. It talks about that they were they were filled with fear and joy. I think there had to be some almost some chuckles of disbelief. Some chuckles of joy. The excitement. Shouldn't we look at it the same way? Shouldn't we seek that same joy that they received? We talk a lot about grace. We talk a lot about forgiveness. And we should. There's no question of that. It's very important that we do that. But grace is best celebrated with laughter and with joy. In our laughter, we see our arrogance, our ignorance. Laugh at ourselves. Don't take ourselves too seriously. In our laughter, we see the goodness and the righteousness of a God who loves us in spite of ourselves. We believe with the Bible when it says there's a time to weep and a time to laugh. We believe with Luther that said you have so much laughter as you have faith. We believe with Wesley that said a sour religion is the devil's religion. We believe with Flannery O'Connor, who said Christianity is a strangely cheery religion. We believe with Elton Trueblood, who said never trust a theologian without a sense of humor. And we agree with this statement here. Humor is proof that everything is going to be all right with God, nevertheless. Said by the great humorist Charles Schultz. You see, we need to laugh. We need to find joy. We need to share that joy. Part of what we're called to do is to share the gospel. Do you honestly think anybody's interested in a faith that is, that is dreary, that is drab, Share the joy you feel. Share the excitement you feel. Share the laughter and the celebration that you feel in the gospel of Jesus Christ who lived and died for each one of us. Share that joy. If you're not going to share it, what's the point of it? If you can't get excited about it. What's the point? So laugh. After all, Jesus said, the laugh 
shall be first. I got another look from my wife. She, I don't think she liked that one either. I'm funny. The rest of you appreciate it. She lives with me. She doesn't get it. So I do ask again that you share with me all of your uh, prayer requests. Um, again, I want to be able to pray with you and pray for you. If you are okay with me sharing them during the uh, our Sunday morning time together, uh, let me know. I would love to be able to do that. Um, I know there's a lot of, of people that are struggling. For those of you who are, are stuck inside, um, I guess I don't want to say stuck inside, are staying at home for your safety and the safety of others. I know it's a struggle for some of you. I'm not a big fan of it either, but I also know the importance of it. For those of you who are struggling financially, um, I also understand that very much as well, and I recognize that, and we'll be praying for you all, um, and, and just in general, to, to get back into a world, well, just get back into the world. Let's pray for our government officials. Whether you always like them or agree with them or not, we do need to pray for them, because those situations are kind of dwelling on them as well, or at least I hope they are. And so let's pray for everyone. Pray for all of those out there. Other countries as well, because other countries are connected to us, uh, just as the gospel is. The gospel of Jesus Christ has no borders. So we can't just say, well, let's pray for the United States. Yeah, pray for the United States, but pray for the whole world as well. It's not just affecting us. And once we get back out in the world, we need to make sure that we recognize that the entire world is connected not only through the gospel, but also through goods and services. We are no longer isolated countries. We're countries that are connected. So I ask that you join us next week. We start a new series I'm, I'm really excited about called uh, Lost in the Mix. And this is uh, a series about some of the people in the Bible who are not talked about quite as much as some of the others. Uh, and so it, it'll be an interesting, I think you'll, interesting one. I think you'll, you'll probably get a lot out of it. Find some people that you may never heard of in the Bible. Um, again, 6 a.m. every Monday through Friday, I do a Coffee Time devotional. You don't have to be there at 6 a.m. It'll be posted the whole time, but you're always welcome. And also Wednesdays at 7 p.m. is our Wednesday night live service. Uh, this uh, this Sun or this Wednesday, excuse me, we will be talking about the story of the loaves and the fishes, the great miracle that Jesus uh, brought about, and having a little bit of trivia and some interesting talks about that. So please. Share this out. Pray for each other. Love on each other as best you can while we're being physically distanced. And just go out in goodness. Let me say a prayer and we will get out of here. May the God of surprises bring smiles and joys to the everyday and ordinary. May the God of love be seen in all we do and say. Go forth rejoicing for the good work has just begun. Amen. Thanks. And God bless.